So it's been quite a while since I've done a video that shows me fish, or even all of them. In fact, I'm not sure if I've ever done a video that just shows all the fish in one video. So let's have a look. So this is the first pond that we've come to, and this has got some of my year old fishes in it. And they're a good size. These are all the uh, fry from Cuttlebrook. So there's some lovely fish in here. Uh, really quite nice. This is all my uh, uh, platinums and stuff like that. So they're really good, shiny, and um, metallic coloured fish. Uh, so there's some really nice fish in it. I mean, really happy with the quality of them. It's unbelievable. There we go. Let's have a look over the side. So I did a video a while back showing this pond when it failed. I'm not quite sure if I actually showed that I'd filled it back up again. Um, because it's not really that well fixed. So what I did to fix this tank is I basically put a, a strap it at the back and went all the way around it and just tied this ratchet strap for up and it's kind of holding the tank together. So not really a permanent solution but it's the solution that I've gone for. And uh, it's worked. It's worked for me for a bit now. There we go, you can see the fish. And uh, some lovely fish in there. Okay, so look at them. So let's go and have a look at the other fish. Go through here. So I did have a swimming pool in the back garden. That has now gone and been replaced by grass. And I've put this little wall up here to try and stop the dogs getting on it, but it doesn't really help. Um, and I need to put it back up as well. But uh, yeah, so that's a look at the outside of the fish house. There you go. Not, I've, I've not had that shot for a while, but there we go, that's the outside of the fish house. Let's walk in and have a look. So the, uh, the fish in the swimming pool, there's, a, there's some left. But I ended up selling most of them, um, fortunately, because I had well too many fish. I just couldn't handle the, uh, just couldn't handle having that many fish here, to be honest. Um, and I can't keep that swimming pool up in the garden for another year, so fortunately I took it down. Um, so this is the main pond. These are all obviously my big fishes and very happy hungry fishes at the minute. So obviously I had that problem with the filtration system. Um, I didn't have one basically for quite a long time and now I've got the filter running and the filter working. I'll just do a little bit of an update on that in a minute. And I'm really pleased with the new shower filter. It's working absolutely lovely. Although it's doing exactly the same job really as my river did. Um, it works exactly as well as the river did um, because the river worked really well but it's not above the pond in fact I need to take out this metal bar for some reason I just haven't got around to it yet um, but this pond obviously I had a lot of problems with sewers on my fish we were having no filter on it for a couple of months which were you know really bad and a bit of a, well, a, bit of a challenge and a bit of daftness of me uh, for doing such a thing to be honest um, I should have got the new filter before I sold the old one, but I didn't. I'd say live and learn, but like I said, I should, know, should have known better. So, basically what I've done is I've heated this pond up. So this pond is currently 13 degrees, uh, 13, 30 degrees Celsius, so it is really warm. It's swimming pool weather, and I've been swimming in it a couple of times as well, it's lovely. And uh, that's why the fish are very active. and. Uh, they're doing really well and the ones, there's a couple with sewers on them still but they're really healing up very well. Um, like my chaggy, no, this is not bad at the minute, but my chaggy and the big sewer on it and that's almost completely healed up which is just great. And uh, it's been going really good at 30 degrees but as, well if you've ever heated your pond to such temperatures you'd know that the water quality has to be absolutely perfect because your ammonia and your nitrite are very, very toxic, even in incredibly small quantities at uh, 30 degrees. So, to be able to eat it to 30 degrees, you know, the water quality has to be perfect, and thanks to that new filter, it is. So, I'm quite pleased with that. So, let's have a look at the little fishies. 
So here we are with the tank at the back of the fish house. Uh, this has got the fish in it that were from the swimming pool that were outside. Um, so, well, the remainder of the fish. There were about 700 fish in that swimming pool. Um, there's probably about 40 or 50 left, maybe. Um, so I've managed to get rid of quite a lot of them. As you can see, the, these particular ones, not all of them in the swimming pool, some of them in that that we saw at first were out of the swimming pool. Uh, but these ones, uh, you blend the colours and that, and I've just kept them in this tank to keep the tank running. Uh, because shortly I'm going to put some fry in it, which I can't wait to get some more fry and make some more videos on fry. That's going to be good. Now I've got the room to do it. So here we are with the shower filter in the basement. Um, so basically I want to talk about some of the questions or comments or even things mentioned in previous videos um, and how I've gone on with it. So basically one of the biggest questions were obviously a pressurised shower, you know a backy shower is supposed to be able to gas off. To me I, I've not seen that, it doesn't make any difference. So I've had it completely submerged with water for a week because it's been running for about a month now. I've spent a solid week with water level up here. It didn't make any difference. The water level, the water tested exactly the same as it did when it when it's got air in it. So between air and water, it doesn't seem to make any difference at all. Uh, now, also the air in it. So the air gets the the percentage of oxygen that I tested with my scuba gear is 13% in this chamber when it's supposed to be 21 of the atmospheric air. Um, what I did is I did a test where I filled the water up to cover the media completely so that the media couldn't be using the oxygen and it still went down to 13%. So it's actually the water itself that's absorbing the oxygen that you put in it. And I imagine if there was something in there breathing the oxygen, say a mouse, it would drop it down to 10% but then the water, water, the oxygen would dissolve out of the water to bring it back up to 13%. So. I, th I think that's solved by the water flowing through it to be honest and you're never going to get you're never going to get high concentrations or low concentrations of oxygen it's just probably going to remain say it's 13 percent at minute but that could be because of the temperature of water so in winter when water can hold more oxygen it might come up quite a lot uh, so that's that bit it doesn't matter it doesn't make any difference either way from what I can tell um, it doesn't bother the media. Obviously if the media is completely submerged in water it's only got the access to the 13% oxygen so it doesn't make any difference. And obviously with the gassing off itself of a shower filter the term gassing off seems a little bit odd. It doesn't particularly mean that anything gasses off at that time. Um, so basically what will happen with this, say if something safe say if oxygen wanted to gas off the oxygen will gas off into the uh, chamber and then be absorbed by the water make its way into the pond um, and then gas off in the pond so basically if I put pure oxygen in here if I put 100% oxygen in here very shortly it won't take long at all there'd be 13% oxygen because basically what the water would do is the water would take all that excess oxygen replace it with nitrogen from the air outside and take all that oxygen and put it in the main pond and then the main pond wouldn't be able to hold it because the oxygen level outside is only 21% so it just gas off into the atmosphere so no matter what gas there is released by the um, media or whatever's in the chamber it will just make its way into the pond and be gassed off in the pond so um, it literally it shouldn't be any functionally different from any other shower um, it just has a little extra step by being pressurised um, and obviously it can't absorb oxygen as such because it is pressurised so basically if I didn't have my air stones in the main pond blowing up air bubbles uh, my fish would probably be starving for oxygen because this would be using the oxygen um, whereas a normal shower obviously being churning up does it doesn't add oxygen, so showers do take away oxygen from a pond despite being churning the water up so much. Um, but they don't, it wouldn't, you know, take away as much as this would uh, by being very confined. 
So, comparing it to a normal shower, I don't think it makes any difference. It works absolutely perfect for me, and it works just as well as my river. I can't say it works better than my river, it does exactly the same as the river does, did. So, I'm quite pleased with it. That's all I wanted. All I really wanted were it to be as good as what I replaced it with. Um, so, yeah. Because I couldn't, the, the river works incredibly well, it's a shame to get rid of it really. Um, but, you know, I wanted to change, and this is my change, so I'm quite pleased with it. Just need to perfect this um, pumping air in, because I want to keep the air, you know, I want to keep the water level here, but it's been a bit of a nightmare. I've tried a smart timer, uh, but obviously being in the basement, the thing kept getting stuck on and pushing all the water out of the system and then airlocking everything, that were a pain in the neck. Um, so I'm just, I'm doing it manually at the minute, I just put this uh, air pump on for seven minutes and it, every night and then it does it perfectly. Um, I tried using these things but these might need a bit of modification. So what this is, it's supposed to sit on the side of a tank, say a vat of acid or something like that and it tells you where the water level is. Um, but this plastic's a little bit too thick for it to uh, sense the water through it. So I might have to, if I can do any modifications to that to make it work, that'd be quite nice. So yeah, that's it with the shower really. There's not much to say about it, so I didn't want to make a video specifically on it. Um, but at the minute it's running really well, and I probably will do an update on it when it's been running for say a couple of months. Uh, and I perfect this sort of air system um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with it uh, just to not have the filter basically over the main pond so because the because the shower filter doesn't actually do anything that my river filter doesn't uh, couldn't do what was the point in getting rid of it that's a really good question the point in getting rid of it was because I really didn't want this metal barrier anymore. Uh, the fish do hit themselves on it because they're quite aggressive when they're feeding. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted something different specifically. And I wanted to learn something. I feel like I have. Um, it's been a little bit of a thought in the back of my head to put the shower filter uh, in the basement for quite some time. Uh, and uh, I saw the opportunity to do it and I took it. And I'm quite pleased I have, um, you know, it's been a bit of an experience and it still will be I'm sure, and, but there's going to be a few more quirks with it that I'm going to find out at a later date, but I'm quite pleased with it, um, like I said I just need to remove this thing, and I think it'll make the pond look a little bit better as well, and if we stand away and look at the entire pond, you know, without without this section on it, just here, it'll make it look a little bit bigger um, which would be nice um, but there we go so I hope you like this video if you liked it then please like it if you want to see more fishy related videos and especially videos on my fry which will be coming shortly hopefully um, then please feel free to subscribe and I shall see you in the next video if any questions or comments then please put them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. See you later.